Ke Kipa or hi gang. This is just the most spectacular weather. The days have gotten really long and warm and the beginning of June has never felt so good. It's just been a delight. And there are so many jobs to be getting on with in the garden. Bok. I'm Mandio. This is Grow, Make, Cook, and welcome to my garden. I grew up in Australia in a permaculture family, but after we got married, Mr. O and I moved here to his home country of Croatia. I am a passionate and hands-on homemaker and gardener, and I love life's simple pleasures. So join me on my journey, and together we can learn to grow, make, and cook. This is the first week in June, or Lipan. It's a real good time of year at the moment for legumes in the garden. These are my dwarf beans. They're supposed to be self-supporting, but I've had to chuck a couple of little twigs in there because they were flopping all over the place. But they've got lovely big full pods. These are Piccolo Provinciale. It's an Italian sort, and I find that a lot of the Italian varieties of peas and beans do very very well here funny it's just across the way they're a very close neighbor and they seem to have a lot of good varieties of peas so we're picking those i'll have to think of something to do with peas and broad beans hmm let me think I'm just pulling back my mulch down here at the bottom of my cottage garden bed and lots of things are looking lovely. In fact, I can see that the broad beans are ready for picking. We'll have to do that today. But what I have here is something really, Maya, out the way, lovely. What I have here is something really exciting and she seems even more excited. Are these, I've been pricking out my Nevin or Calendula. Um, I guess you could also call them French marigolds and I've pricked these all out at the same time so that I can plant them up. Um, and they're looking a little bit wilty but they'll pick up as soon as I plant them and give them a good water. So along kind of the edge of this bed I want a big sweep of these beautiful happy golden flowers. Now calendula make a long deep taproot like this. So once they've started to grow a little bit and started to make more than one or two true leaves it's one a good idea to prick them out quickly and two it's really important to go down as deep as you can into your tray or pot or nursery bed or wherever you've sown your seeds so that you can get as much root as possible with your plant. They won't like it if you chop off too many of their roots when you're pricking them out and transplanting them. So it's quite important for the health of your calendula to get a really good deep prick out. So you want to do that with three fingers or a chopstick or even one of those nice flat gardening knives or a very thin trowel if you've got one but any of those really long thin deep tools for getting the whole root out when you are pricking out your calendula. Planting them really couldn't be simpler. There is a really clear line when you have calendula where it turns from root to top so you want to make sure that this section right here where the root turns to leaf is right at the soil line so you've got a little bit of grace where there's generally a little bit of the top of the root there but you want to try and make the soil line sit about there This is really quite a lovely job and I'm almost done now. I've planted out almost all of them. These were um, 
such a lovely thing. I adore the whole process with calendula. They're a edible flower, so they kind of fit within the permaculture idea of keeping everything useful because you can also make creams and lotions and things with them, so they're good for your home medicine cabinet. But also, they're just beautiful. Like, they're so bright and cheery and happy. And oh, for me, they are something that I always have tried to grow, and I've had very little success in the past. And I think that's because back home, it was probably fairly warm consistently and sometimes a bit too warm and so I think that here where we've got that cooler period where these germinated nicely and we did that a few weeks ago together and because it's got that real chance to have the cool and then the warm it kind of brings them on better and they germinate better here outside just in the cold frame than I've ever had any luck with them before. So if you're in a colder climb, these are something that for only a couple of dollars worth of seed, maybe two dollars for a packet of seed, you get so many of these happy golden flowers and they won't last. I mean, they'll, they'll die after just the one year. They're an annual, so it's, it's like buying bedding, I suppose. But there's something so rewarding about growing all of these plants from seed. And that is the last one of all of my little calendula seedlings planted. A lovely job to get done. And just before I grab my can and water all these guys in, I'm going to do another little job right here. This is my tulip and my daffodils right down here. And this is something I've been doing the entire way around the garden. So these are the spent flowers and they're starting to bulk up at the bottom there. They're starting to try and make seeds. So I am deadheading or just snapping the flowers off but I'm leaving the leaves and all of those green stems intact because what happens is the leaves still grow and produce energy and they will put all of the energy that they would have spent developing these flower heads back into the bulb. And so usually you would just buy new bulbs for tulips and daffodils and everything every year. That way you're guaranteed flowers. But this way I'm increasing the chance that I might get flowers again from these same bulbs next year. Ugh. super exciting. It's been a long while since we've had broad beans. The ones from last year, you might remember, completely failed. But this year we have learnt from last year's mistakes. So these are my Aquadulce broad beans and they're spectacular. They're beautiful, they're thick pods and with this variety, uh, previously, I've gotten quite a few nasty surprises. You open them up and there's nothing but soft white fluff. But I'm feeling the beans. These are here. When you're picking broad beans, it's really important, oh, not to crush your sunflowers but also to use secateurs. Don't be tempted to just pull off the broad bean. They have a really strong and thick stem and a very strong connection to the plant. And so if you try to just pull them off or yank them off or twist them off, you can actually damage the entire stem of the plant and 
because often the broad beans are down low, you'll kill the entire plant. So always for these babies, cut with some scissors or secateurs. It's so important because this way you have a chance to get a repeat flush of beans. So good when they're warm. Nothing like a little garden snack. I've figured out what I'm going to do with my peas and broad beans is I'm going to make some risotto. I have a friend who makes spectacular risotto and I'm really quite inspired by her vegetable only dishes. She does a wonderful one with zucchinis. So I'm going to take a leaf from her book and make risotto with just peas, broad beans and fresh herbs from the garden. The other things that I'm going to want for my risotto uh, right here in the garden. So I'm picking some fresh parsley and I'm going to pick some of my fresh chives. In my easy pan risotto, it's a bit of a cheat I suppose, but I do believe in easy food, is to put the rice to cook. So while that's cooking, and I've got it cooking in chicken stock, not just plain water, I'm going to get my fresh ingredients going. Now before I do that, I've got just a drizzle of regular vegetable oil in my pan and one medium onion chopped into just slices and one big fat, probably two cloves worth, but it was one of mine, of garlic. So that goes into the pan and I'm just gonna give that a quick brown off first just to cook a little bit through. And then I'm gonna pop in my peas and broad beans. Now, because these guys are fresh and still tender. They're not going to need very long to cook. So we're doing this now when the rice is almost done. We're almost ready to throw it all together. So it's a quick thing to kind of just one thing after another. This has been sauteing now for probably, I don't know, a minute, just enough that you can see it started to get nice and golden brown, just a little bit cooked really. And now I'm popping in my vegetables and I'm also popping in a bit of beer. Most people, when they make risotto, will use wine. And that's lovely and it makes a lovely risotto. But I sometimes think that beer, and any beer that you don't mind drinking, will work to cook this in. Um, but beer is often overlooked in a lot of recipes. So I find that in a lot of places where you can use um, alcohol like wine, sometimes, in fact I will say even frequently, you can often substitute in beer and the flavour is different but I really like it and it gives it a bit of a unique and different twist. Normally everything has wine added to it, things like this particularly, so this is, gives it something a little bit different.
the next step, once that's cooked down, and I can see that my broad beans are just tender, is to get my just cooked rice into that pan with everything else. So pop it all in there and give it a good mix about. And now that that rice has drunk up all the extra beer, I'm just going to really roughly chop my herbs in. And that's just with scissors. I'm not worried about neat, fine dicing. Great big chunky pieces, almost like a salad, is just delightful. And I've turned the heat right down low at this point too, because we're almost done. And I just want these herbs to just barely heat through so that the flavour goes into the rice, but they don't end up soft and mushy. I've just turned the heat off and I'm adding two tablespoons of sour cream and probably about half a cup of grated cheese. And then I'm just going to mix these things through thoroughly and serve. A little bit of salt and pepper on the plate as you see fit. I don't like to add any myself, but most people do. And then, mm hmm. Fresh fruit from the garden. Oh, it doesn't get better than this. But I think that's probably about all we've got time for today. So if you like what we're doing, please like the video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you want notifications, use the bell icon below. Thanks for watching. And until next time then, Dovigenia.